Hi there, my name's Chris Winter, and welcome to my full Teachable tutorial updated for this year. Now in this video, I'm gonna go in depth and show you exactly what you need to do to get a Teachable course up and running and looking incredible. We're really gonna to touch on a lot of different things, including how to create your course, how to create modules, but also importantly, how to create an amazing looking sales page built into Teachable and looking incredible. Now, if you follow every step that I show you in this video, by the end of this video, you're gonna have an incredible looking teachable course up and running, as well as sales pages and checkout pages. And what I'd highly recommend guys is that you work on your course at the same time as watching this video. You can pause it and play it as you need to, but it really makes a big difference with knowing exactly where different buttons are and different settings. And one of the great things with Teachable is that they've got a free trial. So you don't even need to have a credit card or anything to get started. You can just put, simply do the free trial and it's got every feature that you need to do. You can even upload all of your course content as well without ever paying a cent. So are you ready to get started and finally creating that course on Teachable that you've always wanted to do? I am, let's get going. So the very first thing to do is click the link in the description box below right under this video and also in the comments down below and that'll take you to the free trial for Teachable so you can get started without a credit card. Okay, so let's get started creating your course. And the very first thing we do now at Teachable is simply put in your email address and then click get started. From here, they're gonna ask for your full name and then you can add in a password. Then just click agree and then create account. So next up, you're gonna be able to name your school and essentially your school is gonna be where all of your courses are uh, available and kind of kept. We'll just call it baking like a rock star, and then we'll click create new school. Next up, they're gonna ask you a few different questions just to get an idea of kind of where you're at. You can just go through these pretty quickly. And then once you're happy, you can click enter my school. Awesome, this is your teachable dashboard. You're here, you're ready to create your course. Now I know a lot of you guys uh, would have been putting off creating a course for a really long time. I myself did the same thing. But if you can just get up and running, create a basic course, you're gonna be onto a winner and you're gonna be you know, selling courses as, before you know it. So the very first thing that I want you to do is take a look over on the left here, and this is your main menu in your dashboard. This is really where you can go over a number of different things and edit everything you need to do with your Teachable course. So we'll go through some of the fun things first, like designing your course, uh, designing the website and landing page, because they're really fun. But I also wanna go over some of the uh, boring, but really important settings that you need to change so you can get more people to um, buy your course and you can make more money. So the very first thing is we've got our dashboard here, which is really where just the homepage of your Teachable course. Then you've got users, and this is where anyone who's enrolls in your course is gonna end up. You can see we have no students at the moment, but that's fine. If you ever wanna add students manually, say they purchased it outside of Teachable or you just wanna add someone in, you can click add students up here on the top right. Then we've got owners, which is just probably gonna be you or me. And this is where you can just you know, have the owners of the course. And then we've got authors. Now an author is someone who is able to create a course or create like programs in the course and you'll be able to see them here. Then we have affiliates and affiliates are people, say you've got a friend who can promote their, your course on your YouTube channel, on their YouTube channel, sorry. They'll be able to um, promote it and if they get a sale, you could give them a commission. So you could give them 20% or 50% or something like that. So they drive traffic for you. It's really easy to set up in Teachable. You simply just go add affiliates and it's super easy. We'll talk about that later maybe on. And then you just got custom, that's nothing else. Then we're gonna to go to site on the left here. Now this is probably my favorite part of the whole um, Teachable area because it allows you to design your own website and also design the sales pages, for example. Obviously, we've got our theme section here which is gonna allow you to change the logo, the school thumbnail, and the favicon, which is this little icon up here on the top. Then you can change everything from you know the font to the colors and everything. So for me, for example, I like to have like Source Sans Pros. So we can click save. And then that's gonna be the font that goes on pretty much every course you create. Anything you change here is gonna generally uh, be on all of your courses. Uh, so it's kind of a few site-wide settings. You can also change everything from the, you know, the, the color of your buttons 
uh, to the links, to the heading color, to the background color, to the video player color, simply by just dragging and changing the color like this. It's pretty sweet. Well, again, we'll talk about that a bit more when we do the actual design, but they do also have a few preset like palettes. So you can have it like this if you want it to look like that. Whenever you're happy with anything on Teachable, you want to click save. Next up, we're going to have a look at domains. Now, like I said before, this is your kind of current domain. If, you, if you're happy with this, you can pretty much just have it like this. You can also change it. So you could change it to, for example, baking like a rockstar.teachable.com and then click confirm and that'll change it. Next up, we've got navigation. And again, this is the navigation for the whole website. So you've got your Teachable website and then you can also have in the main menu, you can have your courses, a link to all of your courses, a link for students to log in and to sign up. Again, we'll talk about this more later on. Then you've got bios. Now a bio is essentially a biography for someone who's created the course. So this is my bio here, Chris Winter. I could change, uh, I could add this. Uh, I've been creating courses for a long time. <laughs> And then you could add an image to the bio. You'll see that this can pop up later on if we actually add a bio section on the page. Then we've got pages here. So it can be a little bit confusing with Teachable, but I'll, I'll try and tell you how this works. So we've got our homepage here. So if we click preview, we've got the baking like a rockstar homepage. And this is really where you would just have a directory of your courses. We'll talk about this a little bit more later on, but this isn't your, uh, this isn't the course page. This is the basic website of your, uh, for Teachable. Then you've got a privacy policy and terms of use. Then you've got things like comments. So if people have le left any comments on your lectures, and then you've got a few other things as well. Next up, we've got sales. And this is where all of the sales come through. So, you know, you'll, uh, if someone buys a course, you'll see that, you know, $500 comes in, $1,000 comes in, all those transactions will appear. Then you've got statements, breakdowns, and then you've got upsells. Now upsells are pretty sweet. So an upsell is essentially, the best way to describe it would be like, um, if you go to McDonald's and you buy a burger and they're like, do you want fries with that? So you could say, yes, I want fries with that, of course, because I love fries. So for your course, it could be, you could sell the course, but do you want custom coaching for an extra 50 bucks? Or do you want a free, a, a, an ebook for $5? And essentially this is gonna allow you to increase the amount of money each people are spending uh, whenever they buy each course. They're really useful and we'll talk about these later on. Then you've got emails and this is pretty sweet with Teachable. They have a full on email system where you can contact anyone on your list or uh, anyone who's actually enrolled in your courses. So this can often cost a lot of money if you use someone like ConvertKit or you use MailChimp or something like that. But with this, anyone who's on your list, you can you know, contact them, maybe tell them about a new course that you've got coming up or different things like that. There are a lot of different settings as well that you can change. Now talking about settings, we've got this settings wheel right here. And this is where you can change a lot of the general settings for your school. So like we've said, we've got our school name here, Baking Like a Rockstar. Then you've got your business name, just for formal purposes. For example, if you actually have a separate LLC or corporation. Then you've got your homepage heading. So this is gonna be on the main website. So we can call this Baking Like a Rockstar. And we could say, welcome to Baking Like a rock star, the best place to learn how to bake. This also is going to generally show up, I think, on uh, Google. So you wanna make sure that this is quite good, the description and the heading. You know, when you go into a Google search, that should do it. Now, you can also uh, add a few different things like recapture and stuff like that. Don't worry about that right now. Uh, you'll wanna add in your address if you wanna have that in there. And then there are a few other settings here. These will all be dependent on you. Next up, we've got payments. We've got taxes, notifications, pl 
plan, billing, integration, and all of these. We'll go through these later on. They're a little bit boring, but they're important. So stay tuned later on. But what I wanna do first is jump into the fun stuff because this is gonna get you exciting, excited and get you up and running. So the very first thing we're gonna do is create a course. Now, that might sound difficult, but trust me, it's actually pretty simple. So to do this, we're gonna go right here to the left where it says courses. And this is where you can create your very first course. To do this, we're gonna simply click new course. So we have our course title here, and this is gonna be obviously the title of your course. You might not have a name yet, but you know, you might. So I think we'll call this Baking 101. And then you're gonna have a subtitle. So everything you need to know to become a uh, artisan baker. Everything I do here is just a bit of fun. So take it easy on me, but yeah, hopefully you'll be able to figure it out for yourself. So, you know, if I'm doing Baking 101 and you've got a photography course, you could call it, you know, Photography for Beginners. Or if you've got a basketball course, you could learn, uh, have like learn how to dribble or something. Just create it for your, own th uh, for your own self. But I would really, really recommend that you follow me at the same time as I make my own course. Then you've got your own author. So again, if you've got another author or if it's someone else, not you, you can click add new author. But it is me creating this course. So do that. And then you can hit create course. So now we're at the curriculum section. Now, if you don't know, a curriculum is essentially what's inside the course. And the way that Teachable does it and the way that I recommend and pretty much everyone who creates a course is by using uh, splitting up your course into different sections. This might also be called modules, different modules but Teachable calls them sections. So an, a section might be um, just, it's a way of grouping different lectures or videos. So this section here is already created for you. So we can call this one here. I think we're gonna call it introduction to the course. Look at that, I'm getting emails from Teachable already. <laughs> and then once you're happy with that, you can click the tick. And then this is our lecture. So again, a lecture is pretty self-explanatory, but a lecture is like a video or a text file. If you ever wanna edit it, you simply click here. So this is where you're gonna be able to upload your, you know, your course video, uh, your PowerPoint video, um, or whatever you want. So if you wanna have a video, you click on add file, and then you can simply drag it here. But there are other ways in which you can create your, your lecture. So you could have a text one. So for example, if you just wanted to have some text, you could literally have, this is a text lecture where you write out different stuff. It doesn't have to be video, but you can have it as video. I think for this, I'll demonstrate it as a video. We'll talk about these other options in a little bit. So, things open. I've got an example lesson here, which I can simply drag and drop right here. And this is going to upload it. It's kind of how you would upload a video file to YouTube. Of course, it's going to be private in the course and you'll only be able to access it if you're in the course. So it's going to now optimize it and kind of process it. But what I would recommend is clicking publish. Now this is going to publish it in your course, but of course the, the course itself isn't published yet. So we can go back now. Now, before we do that, sorry, we're gonna jump over here and change the lecture name. Now this is kind of hidden. I, I, they need to make this a little bit more pronounced, but this is where you change the lecture title. So I'm gonna call this, uh, welcome to the, what is it called? Baking 101. Click save. And then we're gonna go back. So we now have our very first module, the introduction to the course module, and we have our very first lecture. And that's kind of just, you know, processing along and we'll take a look at that in a second. So let's add another lecture. So to do this, we'll go to add new lecture, then we can click it and we're gonna change the title. We'll call this, what 
you can expect in the course. Click save and let's add another video. We'll just do this video just for ease of use. Now, depending on how long your videos are, if they're like an hour long video, it might take a while to upload, but these are pretty short ones. Again, once it's got past there, you can click publish and then we can jump back. So let's create a new module now. So I'd recommend, I mean, it, there are so many different kind of schools of thought on this, but I'd recommend, you know, maybe having four to eight videos in each different module. And to do this, we're gonna simply click new section. So in this baking course, what do we wanna learn? We wanna learn maybe recipes and then click create section. So now we have this module here, which is recipes. So let's create a video for this. We're gonna do add new lecture and we're gonna do my favorite baking recipes. Click save, bring in an, another video. Of course you have your own different videos. Don't upload the same video all the time. And then once that's done, you can click publish again. Then we'll go back and just for fun sake, I'll show you that you can actually simply duplicate a lecture as well. So let's say that you have, uh, you know, created a kind of a template in uh, of video. You can simply click duplicate lecture and you can see now we have a copy right here, which we can easily change. So we'll change this one here to um, uh, how to bake a cake and then click publish. So this little button here is also publish. Of course, you'll wanna go in here and change the video, but this can be a way of speeding up your uh, teachable process. Now, I don't want this one at the top because I want the baking recipes to be at the top. So we can simply drag this below and that's gonna change the order in which these are published. So let's take a look and see how this progress is going. To do this, we're gonna click preview at the top here. And this is gonna preview how your course is gonna look for an enrolled student. So you can see that we have our course curriculum here. We have our introduction to the course module. And then we have this uh, first lecture here, Welcome to Baking 101. So we'll click on this and imagine you're a student and there's the very first video. So it's all processed and everything. This is just a basic video. And you can see this would be a really great way to have an introduction, talk about, you know, uh, who you are and uh, yada, yada, yada. Then they can go to the next video, which is gonna be what you can ex expect to see in the course. And they'll be able to click play on that. And of course they can click previous lecture or complete and continue. So let's close that and let's create a new lecture, but this time we'll create a text lecture. Lec lecture. So if I click on this again, We'll change this to um, uh, how to bake bread. And then we can actually go to add text and we could literally just write like as if you were writing a Word document. This is how you bake bread. Add, oh, add flour, water and yeast put it in the oven. <laughs> of course, I'm just messing around, but you can change things like, you know, bold it or italicize it, underline it. And you can change the headings, make it look pretty. And then once you're done, you can click publish. And there it is. So, you know, if you were to have a text lecture, I would probably recommend adding in like a photo or something like that. But you can see that this is an example of a text lecture. There are also different lectures you can have, like you can have a quiz. So for example, we could have this like, um, what is a, uh, what is not an ingredient in bread? And this is a really good way to kind of, um, you know, quiz people and see if they're, you know, they're getting the idea of what your course is about. So we could say, you know, flour, um, water, or like poison. So, you know, you'd hope that would not be uh, the actual thing. And then if you want the correct answer, you can simply click uh, that one there. 
and then click, uh, I think we click add question. There we go. So we can preview this one now. Here's our quiz. So the, the kid is in this one. This one's actually part of the, uh, the same text one as well. So they can say, what is it? What is it? And then if they go poison, click check. It was correct. <laughs> okay, don't add poison to your bread, guys. So that is how you create the content for your course. Of course, you know, creating a course is not super easy, but the actual uploading to Teachable and stuff, really easy. I'd recommend having, you know, maybe six or 10 different modules or sections, you know, an introduction, a recipes one, a, a video guides one, a um, how to sell your bread kind of one, and then like a conclusion one. And then you can have different uh, lectures as well. So that is the curriculum. Next up is really important, and this is pricing. So to access pricing, you need to go here. And the reason why we're gonna talk about pricing before actually designing your sales page is that you need this done beforehand uh, so you can actually add it to your sales page. So let's add a pricing plan. So Teachable is pretty awesome with this because they have so many different options in how you can get paid. So we'll go through these. There's the free option. And you might be saying, why on earth would I want a free course? I'm here to make money. Well, this could be a good way to either just offer a course for free out of goodwill, but more importantly, it's good because you can offer a kind of a mini course or something and get people's email address so you can contact them later when you've got a course that you wanna sell them. It's really good to build up your email list. Then you've got a basic one-time purchase. So say your course is $100 uh, and you can just offer it, it's hundred bucks, you wanna buy it, you get access to it. Then you've got payment plan, which is one that I would recommend because a lot of people might not have $100, but they might have you know $35 right now, which they can pay over three months. So $35 over three months, you'll get uh, roughly the same amount. And then you've got subscription, which is really good for memberships. So rather than having a one-time purchase, it would be you pay $9 a month and you get access to this kind of community or membership group. So for today, we're gonna to do a one-time purchase first. So let's click that. And this baking course is gonna be $100. The name here, we could do, just describe it. So it could be one-time payment of $100. Then you can add in a bit more information if you want, uh, but you don't need to do that just for now. Then click add purchase plan. So right now, the only way to buy this course is with a one-time payment. But the cool thing with Teachable is that you can actually do multiple uh, ways in which you can purchase. So you don't just have to have it as either a one-time purchase or a payment plan. You can have it as multiple. So let's do that. I'd recommend that. So add pricing plan. I think we'll do payment plan. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna charge $35 over three months. Now 35 times three is actually $105. Now I could do $33 and get it the same price, but I think we wanna entice people to actually, um, we wanna entice people to buy the one-time payment. So you get your money up front. Actually, we'll make it $40. We'll really entice people. So now instead of $100, it's gonna be 40 times three, which is $120. We'll call this three payments of $40, 120 total. And then you can click add payment. So now people have the option of either $100 upfront or three payments for $40 a month and they're gonna be charged $40 a month which will total $120. There's a bit of psychology around this but basically um, you want people to be paying upfront and you can give them a bit of a discount for them for that reason. Of course, if you wanted to, you could also add in a membership if you want to do that that way. But for now, we'll just keep it to two. Now, there's a few other things we'll talk about later on. Drip, which is a really, really important thing and one that I absolutely love. Essentially, Drip is allowing you to release different parts of your course at different times. And this is really important and I'd highly recommend this because this means that you can actually have 
um, you can add in different content and really control how quickly people kind of consume your content. So rather than everyone, you know, buying your course and then finishing it in a day, you can actually make it so one section comes out each week. So it's actually a six week course. I'd recommend this for a few reasons, mainly because I think people will learn better if they don't just, you know, binge watch something in a day. I think it's better if it's like over a few different weeks, but also you might not have that content finished yet. So what I would recommend is, you know, getting the first few different sections done, but then you can you can sell the course and then make the, the content uh, while people don't actually have access to it. But what we're going to do now is something that's way more fun. We've done the kind of a little bit of the boring stuff, setting up the curriculum. Let's create and design an awesome looking sales page. So to do this, we're going to go to pages. And you can see that there are a number of different course pages. There's a sales page, which is the main page where you're going to direct people to where they can find out about the course and then buy the course. There's a checkout page, which is essentially the payment page where you can add a few, you can kind of customize it, not a whole lot, but you can change it a little bit. And then a thank you page, which is where you would generally either direct people to the course or upsell. We'll talk about that later on. Let's uh, edit this page though. So they've already created one for you. So we can simply go here to more uh, to edit page, click on that. So this is the sales page. And like I said before, this is the, uh, the, the, it's really important. This is where you're really going to be able to sell your course, describe your course, show a course curriculum, maybe have a video, have your pricing plans. And it's pretty much, this is, this is awesome. So they've created it for you with some basic pre-filled information. You know, what I'm going to recommend you do is delete pretty much all of this because we want to design this way better than they've done it. So as you can see, there are actually these different page blocks. So this is a page block. This is a page block. This is a page block. And they're actually over here. So the first thing we want to do is delete these. Trust me, this will look better than how they've done it. This looks a bit, it looks a bit crap really. So to delete them, we're simply going to click delete. Of course, you can add these again later on. And then we'll keep the banner because we're going to have that banner there. So now this is our course. It's simply just a banner. And to edit this banner, all we need to do is click on it. And then you can see we've got this image right here. So let's replace that. I'm not creating a photography course. I'm creating a baking course. So to do this, we're going to click replace image. Then I've got some photos here. So I think for this course, perhaps this photo here is gonna work. So I'll simply drag and then drop it and then click upload. So now, rather than a photography photo, I have an awesome looking bread photo. We can call this Baking 101. And then we can also change it uh, some subheading text. So welcome to Baking 101. This is the world's best course about learning how to bake. Of course, you can change this your own. You can even change, you know, the size of this, for example, we can make that a bit bigger. I think that looks a bit better. And then we can also add a button. So you can see we've got a button here. What I would recommend is that you change this button to go to checkout page, because this is going to allow you to literally have people enroll from the very start, which is a really good idea. So what we can do is choose which one you want. So let's just have the $100 payment plan and we can change it, this button text, which is this button text here to enroll in the course. Looking pretty good. Now, if you ever want to save your website, which is what I would recommend, you need to click update on the top right here. And we can see that this is looking good. Now we can also go to design on the top right here. See where it says design, click that. And there's a few different things that you can change. You can change like the text color, the alignment of the picture and stuff. But one thing I'd like to do is maybe make this image a little bit darker so it's a bit easier to read. 
just going to change that, bring that down. So we can do this by simply clicking image opacity. Now the background color is white right now. So I want to change that to black. And you can see now that's a lot easier to read. So if I go all the way here, it's very dark, almost till it's gone. And here it's essentially not there. So let's go somewhere around here. And that's a little bit dark, maybe around 0.7. So this is looking really good now. That's what I would recommend if you've got like kind of a distracting image, you don't want it to be too distracting. You can also change like if it's aligned to the right, the text or the left. But oh, actually that looks pretty good. Now nah, we'll go center. Then you can change, you know, how the button looks. For example, if you want a square button. Yeah, we'll, we'll go for that. Then you can change things like padding as well. So for example, if we want the image to be a little bit bigger, we could change this to 80 on the top and bottom, and it's going to be a little bit bigger. But we'll go into the specifics a little bit later on. So let's click update. Now, if you ever want to preview how your course is looking, you can click on preview, kind of how we did before. And you can see that we now have a really cool looking uh, hero image here. Now, one thing I want to do, I don't think blue and red is really going to be that great for, you know, the branding that I want. So let's change this. So we'll go back to the dashboard here and then we're going to go to site. So it's this button here. Remember how we looked at this before? I also didn't really like the font. So I think we'll go back with Proxima Nova, click save. And then we're going to change a few of these kind of uh, colors. So this is baking. So let's think baking. That's going to be kind of maybe neutral colors. So let's change the header color here to maybe some sort of like beige or gold perhaps, or brownie kind of color. Let's go brown. Click save and let's see if this has changed it. Refresh this. That looks a whole lot better, especially for something like baking. The brown looks really good. We can also change the buttons, for example. So buttons and links. So let's change these to a, a kind of beige color, maybe. Beigey gold. Hit save. And you'll see that your site-wide settings are now changed. Instantly, this is looking so much better. It really is. So there's so much stuff that you can change. So let's change, for example, we'll change the video player to the same color. And then the headings will change them to this kind of color and keep it kind of looking good. Again, once you're happy, click save and then we'll refresh it. So the sales page is really coming along. Hopefully you're still with me and you're doing great because we're really going to make your course look awesome. Now this can be a little bit of a long tutorial, but if you are sticking with me, give yourself a pat on the back, have a bit of a stretch. I actually kind of need one myself because this is a longer tutorial. I actually made the shorter tutorial earlier today. It was a 10 minute one, but it doesn't really go over this kind of stuff. But we're getting through this together. By the end of this video, you're gonna have your course up and running. So let's refresh this again, hit reload, and we'll see how our course is looking. So looking really, really cool. So what we can do now also is go to the top right here and click on these settings. This is going to change how this course looks. So you can actually turn off this header if you want and just have it like that. I'm not sure if we'll keep it. What do you think? We'll keep it for now and maybe we'll change it later, but I don't think we need the footer. So let's turn off the footer. You can also have a transparent header and you'll see that that will kind of change transparently, but we'll change that back. Then you can change a few other things, for example, just like the header width and the footer width. But if you don't really know what you're doing, I'd recommend keeping it pretty good. We can go back here, click update. And now what we wanna do is maybe add in a welcome video. This is something I would recommend. So to do this, we're gonna add it below here. We're gonna click add new block on the left. And then we're gonna to go to video and click add. So now, we can edit this video. You can see we have this baking 101 and then we have this video. So let's go to, we'll call this welcome to baking 101.
um, watch this brief introduction to the course. Of course, you can add your own things here. And then, you know, I might, yeah, we'll keep it like that. And then we can add a video. So it's similar to how we added them with the course before. Let's simply go upload video and then drag this in. Click upload. And now it's going to upload this video. So people, when they come to your uh, course, they're going to have this great welcome video. This is really important. I would highly recommend everyone does this with their own course. You can see that it's actually generating a thumbnail as well. And you can create your own custom thumbnail. Now, if you don't know, a thumbnail is like the preview image for the video, which will appear here. I'd recommend having a custom thumbnail, just like a basic like JPEG image, 16 by nine, uh, just because it might come up with a better, you might come up with a better thing than it auto generates. So it's just gonna be uh, uploading this for us right now. Again, if you wanna change the design of each of these modules, you can do that as well. What I would recommend is keeping things relatively consistent throughout the page, but this will do. So we'll click update. And then while this is uploading, we will go here and add another block. So we've got our hero block here. We've got our video block. Let's now add a, maybe an image with text and we can talk about the course, uh, what it is, a brief one. So we'll click image with text and click add. And you can see now we have an image on the left here and some text on the right. So let's change this photo. We'll click replace image got some other ones. So maybe we'll use this photo here and click upload. And you can see we now have a nice photo here and we can add some text. So we could say um, about the course and then you can obviously use whatever you want. You could say this is a brief introduction to the course. Of course, you're going to write your own thing. I'm just going to grab some lorem ipsum text. This is just like dummy text, for example, um, to use in here. So, of course, add your own stuff. Let's do this. Here, you could add your own uh, about the course information as well. So that's looking pretty sweet to me. And if you want to, you can also have the image on the right. You can change this to however you want. So maybe you want the image on the, the text on the left and the image on the right. Again, totally up to you. Once you're happy, you can click update and then click preview and we'll take a look at how it's looking. So within what, 10 minutes, we now have a great looking uh, hero image here with some text and you've got a button so people can enroll in the course. Then you have this video, which clearly has updated. And look, we've got this nice color here as well, which is really on brand. People can click play and they're gonna be a really nice, get a really nice introduction to the course. They can scroll down and you can see that they have the uh, information about the course here. Of course, you'd have your own text here. But they've got a nice photo as well. We can change a few different things with this. So um, for example, if we wanted to, we could change the padding and the, we could change the gutter width. So this is a design term, but the gutter is the uh, distance between here and here. I feel like this is a bit close. So we can change this to, let's double it to 48. And you can see that it looks a little bit ni nicer. Click update and we'll see how it's looking. That looks a little bit better right there. So we've got a few different sections. We've got our hero, the video, and then this section here. I think what we wanna do now is go back and add a new one. So let's click add new block. And I think what we'll do here is add in a course curriculum. So we already talked about the course curriculum. The course curriculum is all the lectures and stuff that's actually in your course. And you can see that it's pre-populated this with everything that you've already got. So how cool is that? So rather than having to write it in yourself, it comes up with it. And it even comes up with the video uh, length as well. 
So we can go to uh, example curriculum. We can change this to what's in the course. And this is changing the uh, text here. We can click update. And again, if we just refresh this, you can now see that pretty quickly, we've got a lot of stuff that's coming in, the, in this course here, in this course page, and it's looking really good. So people can see, this is a really good thing about this, having the curriculum, and I would highly recommend having it in here because this is gonna allow people to see what's actually in the course and whether or not it's worth buying. So it's good to have all of your information and uh, your videos in. That's why we created the curriculum before actually creating the sales page. Now, one thing that I would like to do is give a bit of a preview of what the videos are like. So people come here and then, you know, if they're not enrolled, they can't actually see these videos. They'll, if it, they click on it, it's gonna say enroll in the course to see these videos. But what we can actually do is go to our admin, you know, our dashboard, and we'll go to the courses section again. We've got our course here, Baking 101. And if we go to curriculum, what we can actually do is turn on preview for some of these videos. And I would recommend this because it really shows what's an example of what your course is actually like. So if we go here, we can click on make free preview. Just click that. And now that is a free preview. And I reckon we'll also want to have a preview for these two as well. Of course, you don't want to show everything for free because people aren't going to pay for your course then, but give them a bit of a taste and then maybe they'll want to buy. So if we go back to our sales page now, you can actually see that now they have an access to these previews. So if they click on this and watch that preview, they'll have access to what the course looks like on the back end. And this is a really great thing. They can click play here, have a look at the course, and they'll say, hmm, well, that was a pretty good video. Maybe I want to enroll. So it's a really good idea, guys. Definitely do previews. So let's go back again. And we've now got a few different sections. Let's add another one. We're on a roll. Let's go add new block. And I think what we want to do is actually duplicate this section here and have a bit more information. So to do this, rather than having to create this yourself again, you can simply go image with text, right click here, or, I mean, click on these buttons where it says more and click duplicate. And now at the bottom of your course page, we have an exact copy of this. So of course we don't want this to be about the course, but we might want to change this to um, about, uh, or like, yeah, uh, the author, about the author, about me, okay? Let's change this image as well, of course. We don't want the same image. We've got these other ones we can use. So I might bring in this one. You might want to have a photo of yourself, but just for ease of use, we'll just do this. And then as a design choice, I want to have this on the left. This one was on the right. I want this one on the left. So we'll go layout, left image, and then click update. As simple as that. Let's have a look. Preview again, guys. So if we go down now, we've got our Baking 101, the video looking cool, with not a great thumbnail. That's why I'd recommend a new thumbnail. You've got the about the course, you've got what's in the course, and then you've got the about the author. Looking really good. You know, I wanna, might wanna move this about the author right here. So we're gonna drag it by clicking here and we're gonna put it above the curriculum. I think that looks better. Looking pretty good, guys. Another really cool block is the grid with text. So we're gonna go here where it says text with image grid, click on that and then click add. And what this is, is uh, a three column grid. You can have two if you want or three. And here, what maybe I would add is different uh, things that they might learn in the course. So we can just go through this relatively quickly, but to change the image, I think you know how to do it now. You click replace image. Let's add in a photo. So we'll go for this photo here. It looks pretty good. Click upload. And we'll call it how to bake bread. If we want to edit this one, we're going to go to here. I'm going to change this one, replace image. 
we'll go with this one. That looks pretty good. And then we'll call that one how to roll bread or how to roll dough really. And then to edit this one, we're gonna go here and we'll change this one to, is that the same size? Yeah, it looks, we'll use this image again. I liked that one. Um, how, how to uh, score bread. I think that's how you call it, score, where you make these little indentations. Now, did you see that the heading changed there? It's because I messed around with it. I'm just gonna copy and paste this just to make sure that this looks good. Let's do that again. Now, you can obviously change the text here as well. Uh, you can see that this is not the right text, but add your own stuff. I wanna get rid of those spaces below here. And then once you're happy, click update. Let's have a look at it. Refresh. Got what's in the course. And then we've got this. And that looks really cool. It really does. You can change the design if you want. So again, we could change that gutter width. So we we'll maybe make it a bit further apart. You can even change it so it's a bit wider, this content. So let's make that 1,040 pixels. And now it's a bit bigger. If you don't really know what you're doing, I probably wouldn't recommend changing things like the gutter width and the content width because you can make more problems than good. But for most people, you can do it. So it's really looking and coming along now really well. So what do you think? Do you want, <clears throat> would you want to have this above this? I think we probably do want to have that. So let's bring that again, change this. And now it's looking better. Now, one thing I would probably recommend, because if you're gonna be creating a big sales page, it can get a bit confusing. So you can actually rename these. So you could call this one about the course. It would be nice if this was automatically done, but for some reason they don't do that. And then this one is about the author. And then this one here is, what would we call it? Um, uh, yeah, what's in the course? No, that's not good. Uh, image grid, that's fine. Then course curriculum is probably fine as well. So again, always click update. And then I think really the course is starting to look fantastic, especially the page. So we can click add new block and I don't wanna bore you too much on this. You're probably enjoying it because your course is probably being built at the same time. And if it's not, make sure you sign up with Teachable Link in the description box below and you can get a free trial. But what we can add is we'll add in, hmm, we'll add in the pricing. So the pricing is essentially gonna be where people can check out. So you can see now we have a, uh, a new module here where it says choose a pricing option. We could say, something, we could have it different. Maybe we could say, are you ready to bake? And then we've got this one-time payment here, but we've actually got two different pricing options, don't we? So what we can actually do is click this one as well, and this is gonna add it. So now people have the option of either going for the one-time payment or the payment plan. Now you see that the pricing is a little bit different here. It's not 100, it's 125. That's because it's adding on the tax and it's dependent on where you are. So I'm currently in Sweden. So we have 25% tax, which gets added on top of everything. This will look different for each person. If you want, you can turn off the tax, the automatic tax, but that's something later. And then you can change this, enroll now. You could keep that if you want, or you could say, let's get started baking. And then click update. So if we look now at the course, we have our awesome hero image here with our nice subtitle, the button. We've got this welcome to baking 101 with the video where people can watch the video and it's gonna look awesome. The branding looks good as well with this color. Then we have this first 
image here, which is about the course with some text. Then you've got about the author. And then you've got this little uh, grid here, which is going to show you what you can do. You could add another one of these if you wanted to. Then you've got a curriculum with the preview. Remember, people can click on this and take a look at what the course is actually like. And then you've got, are you ready to bake? So they can choose, hmm, well, do I want to do the payment plan or do I only have 50 bucks this month? So I'll do this one. I'll, I'll do the $40 one. And then they can click, let's get started baking. Once they're here, they're going to get taken to the checkout page. And you can see we have our Baking 101. We need to add a thumbnail here. We'll do that in a second. But you can see that they've got a clear description of what they're going to be having, three payments of $40 a month. There's that tax that I was telling you about, the VAT. And then they won't be logged in unless they have a Teachable account already. So they'll just you know create their own account. Then they've got the card details, which they can put in. And then they've got their billing address. And then once they're done with that, they'll click buy now and you're going to get paid. It's pretty sweet like that. So it's pretty sweet where we've come from. So within, you know, roughly 50 minutes, we've been able to create a full on curriculum and we've been able to create an awesome looking sales page. Now we're going to keep going with the design aspect because the next page is actually really important because it's going to convert people or not convert people. So we'll go back to pages here on the left and we've done the sales page, but now we need to do the checkout page. This is pretty simple. It's not as big of a design kind of uh, thing that you need to do, but click edit page. And this is going to show you kind of what is uh, people are going to see. So there's a few different things that you can have on this kind of checkout page. So if we take a look here just quickly, we'll go back. This is the checkout page and we can add a few different things. So we can, for example, have a testimonial, which is essentially like a review or, or what people are saying. So we could say, uh, see what other people said about the course. And if you've got some testimonials, you can add these here. So we could say, you know, this is a John Doe. The course was fantastic. <laughs> And then you can add a photo. I don't really have one, but um, I love bread now that I can make it. But you can add in a photo if you got a photo of someone, but click save and I'll show you just how this looks. So again, we'll go back here, we'll refresh this. And then we actually need to publish it as well. So refresh it again. And now you can see we have these testimonials. And the reason why you would want to have testimonials is just for a bit of social proof. And you really want to push people over the edge of so that they buy your course. You can also add in some bullet points. So um, you could say, here's what you're getting with the course. You could say um, eight hours of video content. That's a lot. Let's say three. Um, self-help book, <laughs> 50 bread recipes, a great community. You know, you can add really whatever you want and then we'll click save again and then we'll see what it looks like. And you can see again, this is really great to kind of, uh, you know, stop any doubts of people who might want to buy your course. And you can also have different things here like a satisfaction guarantee. So a lot of people recommend having a satisfaction guarantee. So you say if someone doesn't like the course, you can kind of get a refund or you can add in your own kind of image as well if you don't want to have a guarantee. I'd probably recommend it, but let's add in this one here. I think it's nice. Click save. And then we'll see that this one will also come up. So we have this nice picture here just to make sure that people know, okay, it's kind of risk free. That is the checkout page. Pretty simple though, right? So if we go back to pages again, we'll also have the thank you page, which we can take a look at. This here is pretty simple. If we edit this, this is where you can actually add an upsell. I don't think we'll go into upsells just yet. I might make a video specifically on it, but you could add whatever you want. You know, you could add a, a video if you wanted to, which could probably be a pretty good idea. Uh, you could say, thanks for 
purchasing the course and then add your own, you know, you add your own video. We'll just bring in this one again. And in this video, for example, you could give them instructions on how to get started with the course, how they can contact you if they need to, um, you know, how to join the Facebook group or whatever. And then you can even add a button here. I think this button here. Yes. So you want this here. Go to course curriculum. Uh, this could be get started with the course. And that'll take you them directly to the course. We don't really want to have this, this text here. So we'll just delete that. So yeah, so when someone, essentially when someone gets through to the, um, the checkout page, then they'll, uh, they will have done this and then they'll be able to see this video and then they can click on this button. Once you're happy, click update. We can click preview and that video is obviously not ready yet, but you can see, oh, there it is. This would be a perfect uh, time for them to have a look and that's not right. Thank you for purchase, purchasing the course. And then, yeah, you can see they can click get started with the course and it's going to take them to the curriculum. There you can see that's pretty good. Now, one thing we do need to change here is the thumbnail of the course. So to do this, we're going to go back. Stay with me if you're getting a little bit tired, but not too much more to go. We'll go back to information here. And then what we can actually do is go down here to where it says thumbnail. Now, this thumbnail is kind of important because it's going to be uh, uh, a way for people to get to your course from your actual website. So the best way to do this is create a 960 by 540 pixel JPEG or PNG photo. But for now, I'm just going to drag in any photo just so you guys can get an idea. We'll just use... Um, We'll use this one because this one has been around a lot, but you could create your own kind of photo. But this one here is going to be what it's going to be. And then you can also have different things like course compliance, which will mean that someone needs to watch a video before they can watch the next video. It's up to you if you want to have that. So we can click um, save. And then if we take a look now at the curriculum again, Let's see if this is updated. Awesome. There you go. So this is what the kids, or the kids, the people who are enrolled in your course are going to see. And that looks pretty sweet. So you've got this awesome photo here. Again, you could have maybe some text on that, Baking 101. Uh, but you can see that then they have the course curriculum. They can start the next lecture. And uh, it's really looking pretty sweet. I hope you guys are enjoying this tutorial and getting excited. Get excited. This is sweet. You guys are going to have your own course. Imagine if you, you know, sell your course for $500 and you get one, one or two people buying it a day. It's $1,000 a day. And if you did that 365 days of the year, it's, uh, it's a lot of money, $365,000. There are other things that you can do. You can also have like coupons, for example. So this would be a, let's say that we want to create a coupon for Black Friday. So you can either have it for all of your courses or just this course. So we're going to do it and we're going to call it uh, Black Friday. Let me just call that Black Friday as well. You can have it expire. Let's say we'll have it expire in December at the end of the year. And you can choose how many you want. And this is going to be a percentage and it's going to be 50% off. So when anyone uses this, when they check out, uh, they're going to get the course at, what was the course? It was $100. They're going to get it at $50. You can see how many people have used it as well. This is a really good way of encouraging people to uh, buy the course as well. Then you've got different things like certificates. Depending on what you want, you can create a certificate so people get a certificate of completion. And then you can also look at reports to, and see, you know, are people getting through your course? How many people are, uh, you know, going all the way through the course? what percentage they're doing. It's really interesting with all the analytics that you can have. Of course, there's none now because we haven't actually got anyone enrolled yet, but you'll get it done. Don't worry about that. There's also coaching here. This is completely different to a course. This is kind of like offering like mentorship or coaching that you can do. We'll talk about that later on uh, in another video. But if you ever want to get back to your course, you can click on courses 
And then you'll see we've got our course here with our little thumbnail, Baking 101. You'll also be able to see how much uh, money you've made from it and how many people you've got enrolled. But for now, let's take a look at what we've created. So if I go here to Baking Like a Rockstar and go to My Courses, let's click Publish Course. Yes, Publish Course. Now what we're gonna do is take a look as a sales page, at this sales page as a visitor. This is what you've created in this one hour. Hopefully you are able to follow along. If not, watch this video over, over again and get started. We now have a cool header up here where people can you know, log in if they want to. It won't say preview as, it'll say log in for example. We have this great hero image here with this cool bread that people can aspire to make. They've got some text here to tell them a little bit what it's about. They can enroll in the course. And then of course they have this video here, Welcome to Baking 101. That's looking awesome. Then they've got some information here with about the course, looking awesome, with some text as well. And then another section here about the author. You can have your own photo here. Then we've got some more information here with some really cool photos, how to bake bread, how to roll dough, how to score bread. Then they can actually also look at what the course is about and get a preview of it. So if they click preview, they're gonna have a really good idea of what's actually in the course. They can click on this video here and take a look. Then if they go down, they can enroll with the different kind of payment plans that they wanna have. So they've got a one-time payment or a three-time payment. And then once they click on this, let's get started baking, they're gonna be taken to the payments page which you've already customized. So you've got the information here with the payment plan. Then they've got these testimonials and the list of things on really why they should get the course. And if they've got any more doubts, they've got a 30 day money back guarantee. So guys, you've done it. You've created a very, you've, so guys, you've done it. You've created your very first course. Of course, there's so much more that you can go on about, but I don't wanna make this video too long. My voice is going, hopefully you really enjoyed it. If you wanna make your very own baking course or photography course or you know, dance course or painting course or whatever it is, please click the link in the description box below. That'll take you to Teachable where you can get started totally for free. Don't need a credit card or anything to get started. And you'll be able to create your own awesome course just like this one in about an hour, maybe less because I just talked and talked and talked. I reckon you could get this up and running in about 20 minutes. If you do click that link, it is an affiliate link and that'll uh, mean that I'll get around about $10 every time someone signs up and you know pays for, the, uh, for Teachable. It's a really small amount, but it allows me to keep making these tutorials for free rather than putting them in a course like a lot of other people would do. So I really encourage you to get started. Just get started. Click the link, go to the course, create, uh, go to Teachable and create your very first course. Even if you don't sell it, just get started and learn to design learn how it works and you know, you'll probably really, really enjoy it. I've enjoyed it. Good luck and I'll see you later. So there you go. That was my full tutorial here on Teachable. It's an amazing platform and hopefully you're able to follow a few of these different steps and get your course up and running. I know it's something that a lot of people tend to put off. I know myself, I put it off a lot because it can be very daunting. There's so much different stuff that you can do with a course. But I think that uh, Teachable in itself makes it a really simple process to do a lot of the stuff, you know, uploading the files and creating that sales page, which is really, really important. Now, if you haven't created the course yet, please do. I'd recommend that you just get started, uh, you know, stop putting it off if you can. And like I said before, if you do want to use Teachable's free trial, I've got a link in the description box below, which will take you there. That is an affiliate link and that will really help me out. Well, it'll help me out a little bit. I get it around about $10 uh, for everyone who signs up to a paid plan. But if you did appreciate this uh, video and you did enjoy it, I would love it if you use that affiliate link, first link in the description box below. Good luck with your course. You can totally do it. You're gonna uh, get lots of sales and have a lot of success. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to smash the like button. That's enough for me. Hope you guys have a great day and good luck with your course. See ya.